When it comes to choosing watercolors, A. Gallo is definitely at the top of my list of favorite brands. There's such a romantic nature to these paints. Not only does the company use a traditional recipe for creating their watercolor half pans, but they also source some very historic and unique pigments, some of which you can't find anywhere else. Purchasing the paints from A. Gallo is a rewarding experience in and of itself. The things are so carefully packaged and it feels like you're getting a gift each time you get an order. There's such a lovely artisan quality to everything they do and I encourage you to purchase from them directly if you get the chance. Each of these paints are made by hand in Assisi, Italy, using gum arabic, raw pigments, local honey, and rosemary essential oil. These paints are just a delight to work with. They are heavily pigmented and, as the website says, luminous, and I would have to agree. These are the most beautiful watercolors I've had the privilege of using. When I got my package in the mail and opened up the box, I could smell that rosemary essential oil. It makes the experience so soothing and immerses you in the history of watercolor and art. It's, it's just delightful. Using these paints is an experience like no other when it comes to watercolor, at least for me, and I highly recommend trying them if you haven't yet. I chose a wide variety of colors for this palette. I wanted something that would be good for plein air painting, so I needed some very natural colors, but also a few mixing colors that could give me some versatility. There were several historical pigments that I had been wanting to try for a while, as well as some new pigments that had caught my eye. As a lover of history, I love digging into the story behind each of these pigments, and I thought I would share some of the stories with you as I unbox this today. The first color on my list is Gold Ochre. I'd used this color before as it was featured in my Natural 24 palette, but it's a transparent yellow earthy color made from a natural Italian pigment. The next color is Raw Sienna. It's an ancient natural yellow pigment from Siena, Italy. It's made from a combination of various minerals, and it's very specific to this geographic region. It's such a beautiful color and very useful in landscape painting. Pietro Rosa is the next color in my palette. It's a beautiful granulating color, very similar to Potter's Pink, but slightly richer and more saturated in color. According to the website, this color was inspired by stone buildings in Assisi, Italy. 
made from rocks sourced from Monte Sebastio. It's a lovely color and another alternative to potter's pink if you want something that's slightly more vibrant. One of the newer colors in their selection is Perylene Maroon. It's a very deep, romantic, rich red, and it's beautiful for landscapes. It's really similar to Elizar and Crimson, but it's more life fast. It's a very warm, rich red. I hope I'm pronouncing this right, but the next color on my palette is Leighton Red Ochre. It's a natural red earth pigment that comes from the northwest part of England. If you saw my video a few weeks ago about the pigment PR102, this is another instance of that pigment. But this one is a very unique shade, available only in England, and it's gathered in very limited quantities from the lands around Yeland and Wharton. The last color in the top row is Burnt Sienna Mount Amiata. This is another new color for A Gallo, but what's unique about it is that it comes from the historical quarry of Monte Amiata. According to the website, this historical quarry has been closed for a very long time, but they've been given special access to stocks of this raw sienna pigment. Once I heard its history, I knew I had to try it. Moving to the next row is teal blue. It's a cobalt color, but it's cobalt free. Another reason why I love A Gallo's colors is that they're non-toxic and they're free of some of the more dangerous heavy metals that come in a lot of paint colors. Since I'm not comfortable using cobalt in my work, I was excited to have access to this non-toxic version. This next color is a classic, ultramarine blue. It's actually a replacement for a historical pigment called lapis lazuli or lapis lazuli, depending on how you pronounce it. It's so versatile and great for mixing, and the granulation is just gorgeous on this color. Buckthorn berry is another unique romantic color. Historically, it was the sap green color on artist palettes, and it was made from ripe buckthorn berries and weld. What's unique about this color is that its color varies from batch to batch, depending on the location and the harvest of the buckthorn berries. The name reminds me of Buckland in The Lord of the Rings, a place where some hobbits lived. Another historic pigment on my palette is Verdaccio. According to the website, they followed an old recipe from Sanino Sanini using green umber and black iron oxide. Apparently, Sanino thought Verdaccio was the perfect pigment to use in an underpainting, particularly portraits. I plan on using it for earthy landscapes. This is Meteorite Brown, a new color for A Gallo, and it's made from ground meteorite stones. These meteorites were found in Morocco, near the city of Zagora, and they originally came from the asteroid belt found between the planetary orbits of Mars and Jupiter. So that means that this pigment was literally made from a shooting star. The last pigment is Roman Black Earth. It's one I'd had before in my Natural 24 palette, but I've run out of it. I truly love how this palette turned out, and I'm so happy with the selection of colors that I chose. As someone who loves art and creativity and old world history, these paints are the perfect intersection of all the things that I love. Wherever you are, I hope you have a lovely day or night, and I will see you next time. Bye!